Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations at your service to talk about an antenna known as a folded dipole. A folded dipole. What that basically comprises is a parallel wire transmission line, for example, ladder line cut to one-half wavelength, one-half electrical wavelength, like that, according to the same formula that you would use for an ordinary half-wave dipole. That is, the length in feet is approximately equal to 467 divided by the frequency in megahertz. The same formula that you would use for an ordinary dipole. This, although it is in fact ideally a section of transmission line like ladder line for example, just like the feed line would be, it doesn't operate like a transmission line because of the way it's connected. You feed it in the center like this but only at one wire so that in fact what you have is a full wavelength circumference wire. It's almost like a full wavelength loop antenna that has been squashed down until it's flat like this. And that results in this equation applying for the length. The ladder line can be any length but if it's 300 ohm ladder line or window line or even television ribbon, although I would recommend that you stay away from that, that you try to find 300 ohm ladder line and feed this antenna. Now this actually doesn't have to be 300 ohm ladder line, but ideally it's most convenient if you just take a piece of the same ladder line that you would use to feed the antenna and feed it in the center at one conductor like this. Now how does this thing actually work? Well the, this is a balanced transmission line right here. And this is a balanced antenna. Remember balanced meaning symmetrical. So what happens is that you get a current loop right here and you also get a current loop right there. Just exactly two current loops at the feed point. And they both, from instant to instant, are the same intensity and flow in the same direction, just like they do in a dipole. Imagine, for example, that you have a certain amount of current flowing at this feed point. It gets less and less and less and less as you get out towards the end until it's essentially zero at this point and this point. These are in effect voltage loops or current nodes. The current then grows again in the opposite sense around the loop. So if you start going counterclockwise here this current will grow in a clockwise direction reaching its maximum again at the center one half wavelength away from the actual feed point. The same thing happens in the other direction. The current gets less and less and less until it's zero here and then it reverses since. So instead of counterclockwise here now it will flow clockwise back to this maximum right here in the center. So in effect you get the same exact current distribution pattern as you would get with a half wave dipole. You may have seen diagrams like that where you have minimum current intensity at the ends, maximum at the center, and minimum at the ends. But something very interesting happens at this feed point here. At this feed point, if you have an ordinary half-wave dipole antenna with a single conductor, it would be 73 ohms, which we might round off 
to 75 ohms for all intents and purposes. But when you fold an antenna like this and feed it in only one of the conductors, in effect, what you're doing is getting only half of the current at this feed point that you would get at the dipole. The other half at the ordinary dipole, the other half is up here. Half the current is up here, half the current is here. You have a certain amount of RF power that you are feeding into this antenna. And remember the formula for radio frequency power or any kind of power. Power equals current squared times resistance. Well, you have a certain amount of power, so that is a constant. Let's just change that. Instead of P, let's write K for a constant. Current squared divided by resistance. So what happens here? Well, if you have a certain available amount of power, in an ordinary dipole, you'll have a certain current. You can actually rearrange this to discover that the resistance equals that constant divided by the square of the current. Well, here you are feeding the antenna with only a certain amount of available power. So you're going to have half the current here that you would have at the center of an ordinary dipole. The other half of that current is up here. So the total sum total current is the same as it is in an ordinary single conductor dipole. But you're only feeding it at half of the current. So what you're ending up with is a, you square the current. If, if you square one half, then you get um, one fourth. So you have a, that constant divided by a fourth means that this resistance R at the feed point is going to be four times as great as it would be in an ordinary single conductor dipole. So instead of 75 ohms, it's going to be about 300 ohms, actually more like 290 if you want to get really theoretical about it, uh, 292 perhaps exactly, but it's going to be very, very close to the characteristic impedance of this 300 ohm line, meaning that you're going to have this low, low loss ladder line here with a one to one standing wave ratio on it. So you'll be able to run a very long length of this ladder line to the transmatch and your radio hundreds of feet possibly. So if you need to locate a dipole antenna far, far away from your station, say, you know, a quarter of a mile or something like that, you can run a quarter of a mile of good ladder line, 300 ohm impedance, to a folded dipole rather than an ordinary dipole. And you'll have very low loss even in that long length of line because as I have pointed out, and as you probably already know, ladder line is a very low loss line. So you're going to have low loss in your line, even though it's very long. You might replace that transmatch, by the way, with a 4 to 1 ballon. You could use a 4 to 1 ballon instead of the transmatch. You need to cut this antenna, though, to the correct length and if you want to keep that one-to-one -one SWR you have to stay at the frequency that you're, you cut the antenna for. So if you cut the antenna for 40 meters then this is going to be a single band antenna. You can force power into it at other frequencies, other bands. But if you do, you'll end up with a high standing wave ratio on a long run of line. And even with this low loss line, sooner or later you're going to get into trouble if you try something like that. You're going to have <clears throat> significant line loss. So this is a good option if you have to have a long, long run of transmission line to a simple antenna. Uh, it's a uh, 
you have a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio because you, your feed point is a pure resistance of 300 ohms. Just as at the center of an ordinary dipole, your feed point impedance is a pure resistance of about 73 ohms, which we can round up to 75. Just as that is a pure resistance, so is this, but it's four times greater. Remember, because you cut the current in half and then square one half to get one fourth and then divide by one fourth, that's the equivalent of multiplying by four so you're going to get 75 times 4, or 300 ohms right there. A great antenna option for those of you who want to locate your antenna far, far away from your station. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV. W1 Good Vibrations, signing off, saying 73, and so long for now.